Hey everyone, this is John with the Active Towns Channel, and I am at uh, the Berlin uh, Brandenburg Airport, and I'm going to ride uh, into uh, the Old Town Berlin area, the center city, and uh, it should take me about 90 minutes to do so. So let's see how fun and exciting this uh, actually is. All right, let's go for a ride. Okay, we haven't gone very far, but although it was a little hard to understand where to go in the beginning, we made it over onto this path, which appears to be where I want to be. It's interesting that it's not really good instructions. Can't really tell if I'm heading in the right direction. desire line goat path through the field here from the parking this looks like it's probably employee parking
looks like we have a little roundabout here that we'll have to navigate around. We'll see if this pathway goes around. It's like we just go straight. So I don't think we're gonna be actually impacted much at all by it, but we'll see. And as you can tell, there just aren't very many motor vehicles out here at all. One motorcycle rider. Sure looks like this land out here has all been prepped for future development it looks like I've got a bunch of uh, probably rideshare or taxi folks waiting out here to be deployed but, yeah see how that's prepped for a future land development near the airport And another little roundabout here. This one looks a little more substantial, a little bit more traffic, but still quite easy for us. You notice how the design gives a nice priority there for us to be able to uh, get through. And uh, you know, folks don't have to get all wigged out. There's a little bit of a waiting period there. So, very nicely done. Aha! It looks like I am taking the lane for the very first time on this Berlin journey. A little wheat field or something like that. Ikea, anybody? Uh, I see a sports cyclist doing his thing. Don't know if you can see that little light image in there, but the signal is actually a bike and pad. So they are anticipating that uh, I am here on a bike. I certainly haven't done much in the way of wayfinding, signage, any kind of other indication that uh, they anticipate me being here. You see a scooter up ahead. Now, I believe the cars actually did have a red light and no turn on red, which enabled us to get through in comfort. And 
that was very much appreciated you can see how narrow this is um, if I had another bike coming at me my uh, you know the opposite direction that would be rather challenging for us both to be able to get through scan over here so you can see that we're passing over the uh, another expressway it looks like we need to get to the other side of this intersection somehow looks like our crossing is over here to the left then we'll cross over to the right just where this bicycle rider is taken Ah, they have a right turn on our cross. That's interesting. Okay. Now we head down this way for, oh gosh, almost three kilometers it looks like. And we get a little bit of two-way bike traffic. Again, we're at Ikea, so if anybody needs to get some uh, assemble it yourself furniture, uh, just let me know. I'll put it on the back of the bike. Well, no, not really, but it's funny to say so. Okay, look at this, I'll take it. This is rather nice off that big road. Hopefully this lasts longer than a few hundred meters. We are about one hours and 13 minutes away. Oh, there's our big road again. And back out. And again, we're heading on uh, this direction on this street for about two kilometers more. This is obviously an industrial park area. Beautiful wildflowers. If anybody wanted to go for a stroll, a ride out here by the airport. You know, what's interesting is I wouldn't say we've really been inundated by aircraft overhead. The takeoff and landing pattern for the airport must be from a different approach. We got a few other people riding here in front of us. And again, you can just kind of get a sense of how quiet it is out here. Just me, the wind, the wildflowers, some trees, and occasionally a rider or two. Beautiful wide open fields here. Again, we're an hour and 10 minutes out from the city center. So we're still just 
still have a ways to go. It's a warm day and I didn't bring shorts. So I've got my pants on. I did choose the lightest weight pair of pants that I brought on this trip, but still, it's a nice sunny day. I'd like to get some, uh, I'd like to get some sun on these legs. It's summertime. We're close to it. All right. Don't know if you can tell, but we were getting pummeled by these tree root issues with the asphalt. So it's one of the things you have to be concerned with when you are doing your, your pathways, trails, greenways, is thinking about that surface underneath the substrate, how it's going to handle over time. And if you're really close to trees that send roots out at a shallow level, whether that ends up destroying the path. So again, these are like, these are the details that uh, you rely on some of your engineering folks that really understand how to build these pathways. That was really quite punishing, that area. Oh, check this out. This is some logging. Very interesting. And now that we've climbed up to this level, we'll be able to see we've got some train tracks. We're gonna go over. There they are. A little bit of wayfinding on that uh, signpost there. That was rather nice. And it looks like we're gonna merge onto our first red bike path here. And you can see their use of these metal bollards. Protection, but more likely really just making sure that uh, car drivers don't travel down nor park where they should not be. Nice protections around the trees so that drivers aren't damaging the trees. Of course, that one, the tree was missing, so maybe they damaged that one. And you can tell this is very narrow. There is another one on the other side of the street. And uh, first thing that we notice that there's nowhere near the same number of people riding here as in Leipzig, but we're really not in the city center yet. We're out in the suburbs. We actually are probably in another municipality. I am running my Garmin watch, recording this. Hopefully that works. Hopefully we get a map out of this. As we saw there, we had a wrong way rider coming through. 
she's probably looking at me like, who the heck is this guy? Usually I'm the only one on this street riding a bike. These are pretty funky, these uh, metal bollards at each driveway. But I tell you what, I mean, there you go. If you are a resident in this neighborhood, if you don't uh, pay attention to what you're doing when you're getting in and out of your driveway, you could cause some serious damage to your car, which is exactly the way it should be. Looks like we've got ourselves a little grocery store here, a little market, a handful of bikes parked out front. Just saw an older gentleman riding out of the neighborhood here. A little bit more signs of life on a cycling perspective. Got another person here having coming home from work or something else. She had her backpack in her front basket. Maybe she was shopping as well. Scan over and just take a look at the street here. Little residential side streets. Well clearly I'll have to deal with this on the way back. Construction over here. I'll try to remember that. Just pop over to this side. Yeah. Nice little uh, Italian watering hole here, restaurant. bike rider coming out of this little uh, pathway out of the neighborhood. Again, this is the secret to doing uh, suburban context really well, is create a series of pathways. Like that there. Just don't put those blockades up. That looks like she's heading to the grocery store. An old gentle knee scooter. Mom pushing a pram. And we're going to be turning right up here. And you can see how they handle that transition there. And around we go. Nice Electra there. And I probably should have been over in that bike lane there. Alright, so. I am on my little pathway. I should be on this for about a kilometer, and I'm back in a forest. Okay, you may have noticed a little bit of a transition here. We now have a much wider path, and it's concrete, older, with uh, pretty noticeable seams, so you do feel that vibration, uh, but it's much less punishing than the uh, 
the pavers that we've been on, which are old and have shifted quite badly. So this is uh, not too darn bad. Given that we're right next to an expressway, uh, it, uh, it's rather nice. Okay, and now we're on red pavers. More bike traffic, not a ton, but a few. Folks are out. It's like they were doing some shopping at the grocery store or the garden store. Looks like she had a little trellis in her bag. A rather large canal. Some big boats. A little bit of a wayfinding signage there for bikes. And now we get a nice bike signal. This looks like a newer one. Very nice. Those are some old pavers there. Cobbles. Pretty brutal. Here's a train station, you can see all the bikes that are parked here. So you can tell that the bike transit integration is definitely happening here. And you can see our markings in the intersection here. You can also, if I scooch up here a little bit, you can see the uh, situation that exists when you have your loading zone for your transit stop right through the bike path. Um, you run the risk of that sort of conflict situation, and that's clearly a very busy bus at that location. In fact, folks are trying to find room to get on. It looks like they were not able to. It's too full. I couldn't tell, but I think a uh, second bus came up. Hardly even notice that we now have a 
a six lane strode in our midst plus the center median and turning lanes what a monster nice little residential street there well what do you think folks was this previously a an eight lane road did we uh, take a lane away or maybe parking Looks like some sport fields over here. Some sort of a sports club facility. Okay, we got our battery swapped out and we're heading on our pathway again. This road, as you can see, is six lanes wide, 50 kilometers per hour, 30 miles per hour. Uh, as you can tell, the design of the street with these wide lanes is such that it's certainly a comfortable, wide open tarmac for going well over 50 kilometers per hour. I can't imagine they need this many lanes for this street. And yeah, I mean, what a great opportunity to uh, reconfigure this and do a much more comfortable high comfort cycle path and you might ask well how would I improve this uh, I'd probably take one lane away and plant some more trees so you have two lines of trees oh, there's a little pathway into the neighborhood and uh, and then definitely do the pathway in the red asphalt nice and smooth this is clearly a bus corridor Maybe it's a bus priority corridor, I don't know. But I'm hard pressed to believe that we really need six lanes. And again, if you reconfigure this and take one of those travel lanes away, you can also reconfigure how the bus stops work. So the bus stops aren't queuing, the riders aren't queuing on the bike path it's not a comfortable situation for people riding the bus nor for people riding a bike when you have a design that puts the people in conflict you can design that conflict out it's like there's another transit stop there, train station. You can see all the bike parking. up to our mom 
and her son. You can see a rather large big box store here. Big C of parking on this side. The store looks like if the parking is integrated into the building. And you see some older brick structures here. I'm sure we'll start to see some more of that as we get closer to the city center. Huh. said box office there looks like that old building is being used for maybe concerts or other events very interesting And that's how you do a transit stop. They certainly have the space along this road. There's no need to have conflicts. All right, take a look at this. We are on an on-street bike lane, which has clearly been carved into the roadbed. And they have put up some very uh, big plastic things. We're actually turning right here. Parking protected bike lanes on both sides of this street. This is rather nice. Again, it's a nice warm day and it's nice to get some tree cover a little bit. I've been roasting in the sun, first out by the airport and then on these massive strodes. 
they had a little bit of tree coverage with a line of young trees. Oh, listen to the bird. Oh, that was rather nice of them to facilitate that navigation around the construction. I'm going to cheat a little bit and get on the pedestrian pavers. They're much smoother. I understand that the pavers probably help to keep the cycling traffic rolling at a relatively modest speed but man it uh, it can punish people on just a normal bike and uh, punishing is not what you want to do when you're trying to encourage behaviors behavior change at least no punishing of the behavior you're trying to promote. Suppose you could use the stick method and punish for the behavior you don't want. Oh, check out these trees. Now we're talking. Again, nice big park here. It's like parkland on both sides of this three lane road. It looks like one of the lanes is dedicated to buses, but 
Hey, I'm of the mindset this is through a park. Why are there even that many lanes? Do some deep paving. Make the park bigger. guy had a nice little puppy dog in his cargo bike. Looks like there's a pathway going through the park as well. See our wayfinding signs there. We're going to the Fritras Field field direction, but we won't be heading that direction long. Okay, back on track. All right, we are heading over a very large river. Right there. You probably noticed a lot more bike parking at that park.
had a little door zone lane there just for good fun, shits and giggles. Another reason why transit stops should not interfere with bike lanes. That group had the looks of maybe a bike tour. The whole group was on the same type of bike. Is clearly an electric moped nice and silent if a moped has to exist please the silent kind thank you This will be interesting. I guess he's gonna actually pause and let me go through. Probably helps that I'm filming. Ah, nice smooth path. Again, I don't care what color it is. Although, it's cool if you keep it consistent. <laughs> or not.
So this is a really cool area here. We've got a nice paved, raised, parking protected bike lane. Seems to be well used, lots of people. Everybody seems to be going straight. Alright, I'm here at Victoria Louise Platz. I meet up with uh, Mr. Mark. Closet area, fountain. Converted the streets into people oriented space. Yeah. Yeah, so, so Mark, you were just saying that, you know, we, we posed for our home zone photo just to, behind us here, and immediately it ends. So it's sort of like a little traffic calming. Yeah, because the speed in the home zone is even lower than 30 kilometers per hour. Uh -huh. It's like walking pace in the Netherlands or 15. So this is, in effect, a, tra uh, a speed calming measure. Right, right. Yeah, because you can see the sign there saying 30 after you exit this home zone so literally this home zone lasts for a couple of buildings and then they slow down quite a bit yeah. 
I think I made that driver even more uncomfortable. He slowed to almost stop. Hey, Mark, thank you so much for meeting up for dinner in Berlin. That was super fun, as well as hanging out in Leipzig. Uh, these are a few photos from my ride back to the airport. I didn't do a whole lot of filming, but I did want to take a few snapshots just to show you what that experience was like, especially when I got nearer to the airport. Uh, the pathways actually did make a little bit more sense on um, making it back to the terminal. And I was particularly surprised and delighted to see this particular facility. Uh, boy, they need more of this at the airport for sure. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Uh, just click on that subscription button down below and ring that notifications bell. And until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. <laughs>